There is a new book out, edited by my friend Mitch Glazer, Israel, the Church, and the Middle East. Just published, just released in celebration of Israel's 70th anniversary. It's a biblical response to the current conflict. I was asked to write on the subject, is it sinful to divide the land? And I really had to dig into the scriptures and think things through. It was eye-opening for me to, to do that study. Other chapters in the book, uh, Israel, the Jewish People and God's Covenants, by Professor Richard Averbeck, great Old Testament scholar. Israel and her neighbors, Isaiah 19, Walter Kaiser, another top Old Testament scholar. Israel and the Story of the Bible, by Mark Yarbrough. These are all top Old Testament commentator scholars. The Hermeneutics of the Conflict, Michael Redelnik. A Theology of the Israel and the Church, Craig Blazing. The Dangers of Supersessionism, Mitch Glazer. Israel and the Land and the Writings of the Church, Michael Vlach. And then uh, the Messianic Jewish Movement in Modern Israel, Erez Soref. The 21st Century Palestinian Church Within Israel, Tom Doyle. Biblical Reconciliation Between Jews and Arabs, Daryl Bach. Should Christians Support the Modern State of Israel, Mark Bailey. And the Legal Challenges at the Nexus of the Conflict, Craig Parshall. Uh, this is a book I am taking with me, a book that I'm taking with me as I go to Israel next week to read through. And without further ado, Mitch Glazer, editor of this book, longtime friend and colleague, welcome back to The Line of Fire. Hi, Mike. Shalom. Good to be with you. Awesome to be with you, Mitch. Thanks for connecting with us. Uh, tell me about the origins of this book. I mean, the timing couldn't be better. You couldn't have planned it out better. Tell me about the I origins know. of the book. Well, the origins of the book are pretty simple. We felt that, uh, Daryl Bach and I co-edited with me, felt that we needed a book that not only addressed the theology and uh, what the Bible had to say specifically about the difficult issues facing uh, the quest for peace in the Middle East, but we also felt like we needed to hand, we just needed to handle some controversial topics. And of course, I gave the hottest, the hottest potato to you, Mike, and uh, you did a great job. I, I, I learned a lot from your chapter, too. I thought it was really well done. Yeah, and, of course, I, this is... Go ahead. Yeah, a, a big thing for me that I really came away with, I knew it before, but I was struck by how much God says, this is my land, my land, my land, my inheritance, meaning that whatever decisions you make with the land, tread carefully, tread very carefully. But yeah, back to you, Mitch. Right. And, uh, and of course, uh, you know, the good news is, if you divide Israel and divide it and divide it because of God's promises to Abraham and the Jewish people, we know that the land, the land will never uh, be divided uh, for long because uh, Yeshua will put that land together and the Jewish people will have their homeland and he will reign as king. And that's the good, that's the good news of the kingdom. And, uh, and so, but but it's 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 intricate, you know. There's a lot a lot of ins and outs. So basically, there was a group of us that were really concerned about it, uh, seeing the issues in the Middle East through a biblical lens, and tying a few things together, Mike. That I know you agree with. Number one, uh, we wanted to respectfully address supersessionism, replacement theology, and so we we didn't want to uh, bash our brothers and sisters over the head who have a different view of hermeneutics and uh, how they understand the Bible and how it was fulfilled in Jesus and the relationship of the Church in Israel. Uh, we wanted to lay out our case for God's still having a plan for the Jewish people. And so uh, that was a big part of the book. The second part of the book was we wanted to talk about reconciliation. We wanted to talk kindly uh, about what God's doing, particularly among uh, Palestinian evangelicals, uh, many of whom are suffering for their faith, particularly in Gaza. And so we wanted to tie together a response to supersessionism and declaring uh, our love, just like God has declared his love uh, for all people, including Jews and Palestinians. And so we really wanted to put those two together, and they don't usually go together, because so many people who are... Uh, forthrightly supersessionists or replacement theologians are the ones who really promote the Palestinian cause, and those who are more pro-Israel sometimes don't say enough about uh, God's love for Palestinians. Mm. And then the third, the third thing that was really, really important is that we didn't want to throw Jewish evangelism under the bus. And so sometimes those who are really pro-Israel don't want to speak about Jewish evangelism. Now, I don't blame a lot of them, because 
Uh, I'm glad that they're building good relationships with uh, Israeli leaders and with the Jewish community. I love that. They're doing stuff that I can't do, and sometimes, Mike, you can't do, because uh, we are Jewish, we believe in, in Yeshua, and we're therefore uh, rejected a little bit more instantaneously and out of hand, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and so we tie together a response to supersessionism, a ref- respectful response, a lo- God's love for both uh, Jews and Arabs and, and Palestinians. And then third, the urgency and importance of Jewish evangelism. Those three things are not often tied together. And so that was part of the genesis for all this, that we we wanted to put something like this together in a book. And that led also to the forming of a broader group, group of uh, called the Alliance for the Peace of Jerusalem. Mm. Yeah, and, and Mitch, of course, like you, I've read a lot in these different areas. I don't know any book that does bring these three different streams together, or these three emphases together, as you mentioned. Uh, let me come at this from a different angle, and then I, w- I want to dive into your chapter in particular. But I don't know anyone more committed to reaching Jewish people with the good news of the Messiah than you. I mean, after all, you lead Chosen People Ministries, which is a Jewish evangelistic organization. You are unashamedly a missionary to our people with the good news of the Messiah. Many people think that to focus on the Middle East, Israel today, is a distraction. Uh, why would you differ with that? Yes, I think that, uh, it, it, you know, Mike, a lot of us uh, love our mission statements and even memorize them, and thank God ours is short. And uh, But I think it goes back to the way we express ourselves in our mission statement, and listen, listen to it all sort of holistically. So Chosen People Ministries exists to pray for, evangelize, disciple, and serve the Jewish people, and to help others do the same. Mm. So that's a pretty neat uh, mission statement, and basically Chosen People has had a similar mission statement to this for 124 years, because in January we begin our 125th years as a ministry. Amazing. And so we, we felt we, we needed to, to model uh, the whole idea that you can be uh, for Israel and uh, serve Israel. We do benevolence work in Israel. We spend a lot of money caring for uh, Holocaust survivors and elderly Jewish people. We love that ministry. And, you know, in Israel, you actually cannot evangelize when you do benevolence. Mm -hmm. If you do, it's illegal. Now, if you do show love and you do give people uh, food and and company and other, other things that they need for their lives, they will usually especially Jewish people, say, why do you do this? And then we're free to answer. And so God has really blessed this ministry of loving and caring for for our Jewish people as a a way to bridge uh, to the gospel. Now, it's it's not duplicitous. If if people never ask us about Jesus, that's okay. We wish wish and pray. Right? Right. We're going to show love because we love people, and, and there's a need. Hey, let's hold that thought right there. We'll come back. Bottom line is, we stand with Israel because it's right. We stand with Israel because in doing so, it's standing with God. At the same time, we call the Jewish people to repent and to believe. All right, we'll be right back with Mitch Glazer, co-editor of the new book, Israel, the Church, and the Middle East. Yes, the voice of Paul Wilbur, shouts of joy. It is Thoroughly Jewish Thursday. Michael Brown, delighted to be with you. So I go back to New York with my Messianic Jewish friend, Mitch Glazer. So, Mitch, you're explaining why part of the larger mission of chosen people, part of the burden of your heart, is not just to reach Jewish people with the good news of the Messiah, but also to serve the Jewish people. And in doing so, that's part of us being a light to the whole world, isn't it? Yes. And again, I agree with you, Mike. We do it because it's right. And we uh, we don't expect anything for it. And we, we... you know, we, we feed um, hundreds of uh, Holocaust survivors every month uh, in Israel. We also do a lot of camping programs in Israel uh, for underprivileged uh, uh, kids, many of whom are from Russian Jewish families and so on. And so uh, on the one hand, you know, sort of all these pillars, on the, on the one hand, we're just showing God's love to our people, and on the other hand, uh, we're showing his, uh, an incredible depth of love to the Jewish people by taking every opportunity to let Jewish people know that Jesus is the Messiah. 
and uh, and part of supporting Israel, I think, is helping our Gentile brothers and sisters understand the scriptures, see the scriptures, uh, and and to, to see the Middle East crisis through a biblical lens. Now we did a survey, which you know about, and this survey was really important, and it was also part of the genesis for uh, why we wrote the book and uh, why we formed this group called the Alliance for the Peace of Jerusalem, uh, which includes people from uh, all over the place, and I, I've yet to uh, nail you, Mike, on this, but uh, I'm getting... I will. I will. <laughs> all right, all right. But, we've, but we want fire, fire school well represented there, too. And, okay. And we have a couple of fire people that have already signed on, uh, signed our, our, our statement. And awesome. so... Yeah, that's great. And so basically, this survey was done by Lifeway Research, which is the uh, research arm of the Southern Baptist Convention. And uh, they do a great job. And we surveyed actually over 2,000 evangelicals. Now, you couldn't just say, I'm an evangelical. You had to answer four critical questions, which determined whether or not you really were an evangelical, including your heart's desire to share the gospel on a regular basis to friends and neighbors. And so uh, we felt like uh, this, was, this was a good definition, these four points. And so th- what we learned was that 69% of evangelicals say that they support the modern state of Israel. Mm-hmm. Now, we, we didn't ask in that instance what they mean by support, but that was pretty good. So we figured that it was that number. And by the way, the uh, 30% or 31% that didn't say that, over 20% said that they didn't know. So it, it, was, it was not, uh, there wasn't a lot of people, uh, were not a lot of people against it. What really concerned us was the more than 10% drop, actually uh, a little, little bit more than 10% drop, when it came to millennials. Mm. So we asked age groups. And we found that there was a significant deterioration of support for Israel among millennials and younger uh, people. Now, a lot of people think that they've figured out why, because younger people are more interested in social justice. I don't know. I'm pretty interested in social justice or yeah. biblical justice, and I know you are. And so I'm not so sure if, that was, if that's it totally. I think maybe they're not hearing um, about the doctrine of Israel and God's plan for Israel, uh, in their pulp, uh, you know, from their pulpits, and right. and so, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get word out there. And so, uh, can, can I read? Uh, just we have, uh, we're very Jewish, of course, so we have thirteen affirmations and thirteen denials. Like <laughs> Maimonides, thirteen uh, points. And so, let me just read number number one on the affirmation, yeah, number yeah, one ahead. on the denial, and go that ahead. will help explain it. So, and. Um, So number one begins, we affirm that God is faithful, unchanging, and keeps his covenants and promises to individuals and nations. So that's fundamental about the character of God. Then number one on denials, we deny that God rejected the Jewish people forever because the Jewish people in general rejected Jesus as Messiah. To the contrary, God has faithfully preserved a remnant during the last 2,000 years and is drawing more Jewish people to faith in Yeshua today than perhaps ever before. And uh, then just uh, one more, if I can push it. Yeah, go ahead, sure. Okay. Uh, number two on the denials, Just it's a, just a very clear statement. We deny that God has replaced Israel with the Church in His plan for the ages. To the contrary, the God of the Bible is both a promise maker and a promise keeper. So these are fairly uh, uh, simple statements. Some of them get more uh, complex, But again, we affirm the right of the Jewish people to have the land. We affirm the fact that Jerusalem is the capital. And uh, and while at the same time making statements about God's love and concern for Palestinians and uh, assuring those who read this that we are concerned with bringing the good news of Yeshua to the Jewish people. And so these affirmations and denials, which is on the association, uh, the Alliance for the Peace of uh, Jerusalem website are are very important, and they kind of form the curriculum of the alliance, uh, probably for the next uh, eight to ten years, as we mm. pump out podcasts and 
and I, and and th- and this will support so much of what you're doing, Mike, because you're getting out uh, great information about uh, about all of these topics as well. And so we hope that we can turn the tide, because if our millennials, who we love so much, and of course my kids are both millennials, so these millennials uh, are being taught by millennial pastors now, and then. These young people taught by millennial pastors will be the teachers and preachers also. So if we don't influence them now, then down the road, we're going to have even more uh, uh, folks who are not going to be as supportive of Israel in the future. And that's not going to be good for the Jewish people when it comes to concerns for Israel and for Jewish evangelism. And you know what's interesting, Mitch? I got saved in a church that had a heart for Israel I've been around the world, nation after nation after nation, met so many Christian leaders, individual believers with an extraordinary heart for Israel. I'm talking about outlying areas of Africa and India and and meet people that are praying for Israel and prayed for Israel for years or celebrate the feasts or whatever. And and it, it was almost a default thing wherever I went. But when you read church history, it was the opposite. It was anything but love for Israel and love for the Jewish people. So we, we can't take this for granted. That's the whole point. No. We, we can't take this for granted. We have to educate based on what Scripture says and then with a heart of justice for all. So, Mitch, what, what's your goal for readers of Israel, the Church, and the Middle East? Well, uh, my goal is that people face the hard issues through the lens of Scripture. So we've given people tools so that they can work through the Bible and uh, understand how, they're going to come to their own conclusions. We want uh, people to be led by God, but we want them to be led by God uh, uh, standing on the solid foundation of Scripture. Mm-hmm. And so, basically, we are applying, teaching Scripture, applying Scripture to all of these topics. And, you know, yours is a classic example of, of the kind of chapter. Uh, you, you know, you can have a political opinion on why there should or should not be a two-state solution and uh, whether or not uh, you can trade peace for land and so on. But you have to understand the passages of Scripture involved. And uh, same thing with, with, with me. In fact, there was, a, there was an interesting number that popped up on the survey, uh, and that is that over 80% of evangelicals believe that the Abrahamic covenant, God's covenant with Abraham, was unconditional and stands till this very day, mm. which is which is a pretty impressive uh, number. Yeah. And, I mean, it should and, be a hundred percent according to scripture, but I'll take eighty percent. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yes, it, that would be the good thing. And so, in my chapter on supersessionism, I focus a lot on the Abrahamic covenant to show how this works out. So, you can't simply, you cannot have the Abrahamic covenant without believing that God gave the land to the Jewish people. Mm-hmm. He outlines the boundaries of the land in Genesis 15. Yeah. And, and so uh, you can draw it on a map and see that Israel still doesn't have the land that God promised the Jewish people, so we know that there's more to come. Yeah, and, and, so, and, that, and that more yeah. could come when the Messiah returns and establishes his kingdom. But we know, we know the only explanation, logical or scriptural, as to why there's a Jewish nation today and why we're even still here is because God has preserved us and God has regathered us. Absolutely. It's a miracle. And so, but we give people the the scripture passages and the basis for this. I remember uh, many, many years ago uh, when I was a brand new believer and we became believers very near to the same time. And uh, I remember seeing the Billy Graham film, film, His Land. Tell you what, stop stop right there. We're going to come back and finish the story on the other side of the break with Mitch Glazer. Get a couple more minutes with Mitch, then I'm going to go to your calls, 866-34-TRUTH. And some more updates, Israel, Gaza, what the media is probably not telling you. There's even an amazing op-ed in the New York Times of, of all places that is telling you the truth about Israel. We'll be right back. Thanks 
for joining us, friends, on this Thoroughly Jewish Thursday. I'm holding in my hands a brand new book edited by Mitch Glazer and Daryl Bach, Israel, the Church in the Middle East, in celebration of Israel's 70th anniversary, a biblical response to the current conflict. I have a chapter in this book as well. The question, is it a sin to divide the land? That's the chapter that I wrote in the book. It's a a unique compilation, and I'm really eager to read chapters from the other contributors as well. A few years ago, I was doing a conference with Mitch Glazer and some other Jewish believers and biblical scholars, and we were asked before we gave our academic presentations to briefly share our testimonies. Well, my testimony we summed up as from LSD to PhD. When I wrote a track many years ago, came up with that catchy title. I was going to use that there, but half the guys speaking had the same testimony. <laughs> yes, yeah, just one of those gatherings, Mitch Glazer being one of them. I ended up changing mine to from shooting smack to Semitic studies to try to keep it catchy. But Mitch got saved around the same time I did. Uh, God working miraculously among these hippies, radicals, rebels, and saving a bunch of us, and then calling so many of us into Jewish ministry. And Mitch, uh, about the time you were, was it as a new believer or right before you got saved that you saw the Billy Graham movie, His Land? No, it was, it was, I had just become a believer, okay. and uh, I had no, I, I, I mean, I, I had heard of Billy Graham, but as a Jewish person from New York, who in the world listens to Billy Graham? So, uh-huh. I, But I went to see this movie because it was about Israel. And it was the first time I ever connected the prophecies in the Bible with the established reestablishment of Israel in 1948, and then the taking of Jerusalem in 67. And I was so surprised and overjoyed and and uh, flabbergasted uh, by seeing this. And I think that the return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel, as predicted by Scripture, is just amazing and mm. it's an important way uh, those of you who are listening if you want to have a great point of evidence uh, for sharing the gospel with your Jewish friends and showing them that the Bible is true tell them about the land of Israel and what Ezekiel said in chapter 36 and and uh, the promise uh, that you find in Jeremiah chapter 31 you can start at verse 35 and go forward and there's just it's just amazing to see what what God has done and and so we're trying to get Christians to understand uh, these wonderful truths uh, through this book, so that even if even if a lot of Christians sort of intuitively, almost in their do, DNA, just because they read the Bible, and particularly new Christians read the Bible and take it literally, it's why so many yeah. new Muslim believers in the Middle East love Israel because they yes. just read the Bible and just believe it. Mm -hmm. But we want to give people a good biblical basis for why they believe that God gave the land to the Jewish people and why the Jewish people have a right to the land and what the future holds for Israel uh, and the land. And if we can do that, then Christians can teach their friends and their families and their children and their grandchildren, and that will perpetuate uh, this truth and enable all of us to uh, more intelligently and fervently pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes, so friends, this is a book that is uh, thoroughly sound in terms of solid scholarship and solid scholars writing, but not writing in a way that's technical or off-putting, writing in a way that's eye-opening, that's clarifying, but also writing in a way that has compassion on all, that is not casting off Palestinians, especially Palestinian Christians. I was just glancing during the break, there's an interview with one of the gentlemen that I'll be with later this month in Bethlehem at Bethlehem Bible College at Christ at the Checkpoint. I was invited because of how strongly I disagree with them and shouted to the whole world, I'm going as a dissenting voice, but I'm also going to hear from my brothers there as well so that we can interact together. And that's what this book does. Again, Israel, the Church, and the Middle East, hot off the press, co-edited by Mitch Glazer and Daryl Bach. Get a copy today. Get it to your friends. Mitch, as always, great talking with you. Thanks for joining us on the air today.